I may have a secret agenda. I want to normalize some of these Chinese drives because they're really good. I've got another one right here. This is from Fixero. There we go. It's called the H7400. They call it the Hypercore. It's fast, but what's so special about it? They also call it industrial. They say it's really durable. Where do they get off calling this industrial grade? Well, this uses 232 layer 3D TLC NAND flash memory, and that's manufactured by YMTC, which is the Yangtze Memory Technologies Company. It's what I want you to start getting used to, YMTC. Not TSMC, not Samsung, not Hynix, not Micron, YMTC. So when you hear that, that's kind of like China's answer to all of this. They make really similar stuff, and then they're using a controller from a company called InnoGrid. And that's something else maybe you've never heard of. So let's break this down and just talk about the, the components that are in here. I use OEM keys for a few different reasons. This is the price you're going to pay for Windows 11 Pro if you get a retail key. Let's check those prices on whokeys.com. $30, you know, we can do better. Put in TS25, click apply. There we go, 2322. You got Windows 11 Pro and Home. Same with Windows 10 Pro and Home. We now have LTSC versions. This version of Windows 10 will give you security updates until 2032. And it doesn't come with any bloat or AI nonsense, no copilot, no recall. The same for Windows 11. The LTSC SC editions are volume licenses usually acquired in the same way you would get an OEM key and I made a video on where these keys come from I'll link that below so if you have any qualms about using a volume license key then just grab one of the regular keys I don't they work and so I'm gonna grab one and we have two flavors of office if you're sick of paying that monthly subscription well you can get yourself an offline version of office 2019 or office 2016 let's go ahead and check out with our copy of Windows 11 Pro all right, I should put in my card info. There we go. Click on View Keys and Codes. Once you get to the User Center, click on Get the Key. You'll see your key right here in the middle. Go ahead and highlight that, copy that, press Start, and then type Activate. You'll see Activation Settings. Go ahead and click on that. And then right here it says Not Active. Just click on Change Product Key. Place in our product key and then click on activate. Hey, look at that. Active. Head over to whokeys.com. Thanks to them for sponsoring. And now on to our regularly scheduled program. First off, triple level cell instead of the quad level cell. That's because not only are triple level cells faster than, you know, quad level cells, just about three times more durable as well. And you compare this memory to a lot of the other ones. Uh, 232 layer is on the high side. When you look at like Samsung and Micron SK Hynix and all those other brands, you generally see the triple level cells in the 175, 176 to 232 layer uh, arrangements. So good. Drives rated for 1200 terabytes written and a five. This drive's written. This drive. So this drive is rated for 1200 terabytes written and it comes with a five year warranty. Now, with average, I, don't, I guess well, you're not average. So, with like gamers and, and power users, people who are doing video editing and just stuff like that. I would guess that you're going to be using around 100 gigabytes a day. It'll take you over 12 years to hit the terabytes written that this can do. So I think five years is probably even low as far as like, you know, how long you're going to be able to use this. But, you know, you got the five year warranty anyway. One of the things that YMTC does and another reason I wanted to look at this drive is they actually separate their memory modules from all the logic and whatever else, the controllers, the just everything else is separated. That allows them to give you that really dense 232 layer 3D TLC NAND flash memory module. That also allows things to run a little bit warmer, but I found that they generally don't run that warm when they separate them this way. And most importantly for you, it's just faster. But when it comes to like the technical, I guess, finesse of all of this. It's cleaner and there's not as many routes going all over the place. And overall, it's probably just a better way to lay out, you know, your memory and your control and everything on the physical PCB. The NAND interface speed is 2400 mega transfers. That's the IO speed. And we'll check out the IOPS when we do our test. They're advertising a maximum read speed of 7450. We'll also put that to the test. Now this is PCI Express Gen 4 by 4. So it comes with a tiny screwdriver, so you won't have to go digging for whatever screwdrivers you've got in your uh, big old box of random things that aren't assorted uh, correctly. And it also comes with a heatsink, like a little copper heatsink that goes on top. And I've seen this again on a couple different units, and it's really interesting because there's no rubber bands. It, it makes me nervous when I look at it because it's not going to be squished on there, but it works, and the testing will show that it works. I do like this better, but it just feels weird to not have anything squishing it on there, but it does dissipate the heat. All right, I'm going to install this into a a system and we're going to see how fast it is now i'm going to do a few different things you know i'm going to try to see if i can reproduce that 7450 uh, megabytes per second read that they said is possible that's what they said they actually sent me an email that said must must attain this and i was like well i'm not a marketing person so i don't i don't must nothing but i'm going to try to hit that just to see if it can do it and i think it can <music> 
All right, have a look here. Um, I've run this multiple times and I've gotten multiple different things. Uh, you know what I'm gonna do? I've got another computer right here. I'm running this in a Ryzen 7 right now. And I think a lot of people who are gonna be running Ryzen 7s are gonna get performance kind of like this, but I've also got a Ryzen 9 right here. This is a Ryzen 9. Let's put it in here and see what we can do. All right, here we go. Got it in there. Had to remove the copper on the top, but uh, I left the thermal pad on there. It's touching the metal on the fan that's in the system, but the thermal pads are usually not conductive. So I thought, you know what? This might be okay having the fan touch the thermal pad. So it's there. It's recognized. Uh, it needs a drive letter, doesn't it? It wanted the D. Now we can do a little test here. All right, so let's take a look here. There we go. 7411 on the read, 6300 on the right. Let's take a look at the IOPS. God, look at those IOPS. That is ridiculous. Like 200, over 200, actually 260 almost right here on the on the right, but over 200 on both. That's yes. Let's take a look at Addo Disk Mark, and it maxed out at right around 6.91 gigabytes per second, right there on the on the read. And then the right, we're looking at 5.8, somewhere in that range, 5.8, close to 5.9. So really consistent here on both the read and the right. And then the IOPS, you can take a look there, 198 and 185 on the read. And now for a more real world performance, I guess this is what I use when I just comes to like real world usage, ASSSD. Uh, it runs a bunch of tests that are not as crazy as these other ones. And take a look at that, 6,057 on the read, 5535 on the right. This is one of the highest test scores I've seen for for ASSSD. Looks really good. All right, let's also see if we can view the IOPS. And again, really good scores all the way around. The thing that makes me like the most happy, I guess, is the temperature. It never got above 56. And I was doing all these tests back to back to back. And in some of them, I ran multiple times just to see if I could push the temperatures higher. It usually stayed 49, 50, 51, somewhere in that range. But the highest peak that we saw after multiple tests was 56. So, I mean, most of the time, like I said, 52, 53. So the temperatures on this are amazing. The heat sink is doing a better job than I expected. These things always make me a little nervous because they don't have their rubber bands. It makes me feel like it's not gonna be pressed on there, but it still has contact with the thermal pad and it is moving heat. It's dissipating heat away from the core components and the, the memory modules onto the little metal, onto the little copper heat sink. So doing a really good job. Well, we got to 65 on one of the temperatures, but normally it stayed in the 40s and 50s. The heat is not a thing. It's great. For all of you nerds who wanna see all this cool stuff, I'll scroll down just so you can get all of the information right here that's going on. Take a look at this. The drive temperature currently is 40 degrees. The warning temperature threshold is 90 and the critical is 95. So that's where it starts to become like an issue. Now I'm gonna be using hardware info with the smart monitoring right here. And I'm going to be monitoring all three of the drive temperatures that are on different parts of the drive. Not exactly sure where those sensors are, but we have three sensors going on right there. I've already done the test, so you can, it's spoiler alert, you can already see how hot it got. Didn't get hot at all. That's really impressive. I've been testing this thing for far too long. Now it's time to put it to use. So I'm actually going to use this. I'll throw it in my, my NAS or my server here. Another reason why I wanted to use this, you know, is because it's made to do lots and lots of work. It can be used for stuff like I'm going to use it for. I'm going to put it uh, into this little server that I'm building for the for the house. Now it's not going to be running like a data center or anything, but it's going to be running quite a bit. So I should be able to get a lot of use out of this. And seeing how the performance is and how the temperature stayed down, I think I might just leave it on the PCI Express Gen 4 setting. Just leave it that way and let it go. Cause I don't think I'm gonna have any problems when it comes to the temperatures or whatever. So there you have it, this thing's fast. Hope I give you a little bit of an education about all the stuff that goes into making the Fixero uh, H7400 and just, you know, other stuff that you're gonna see from YMTC. All right, let's show you the deals we got going on. Still doing half price on this just for the next little bit, not much longer on these. So half price on these, the coupon code is Happy Hardware. Just use that when you're checking out and the price on these will be cut in half. Also, I got a couple things down here. Oh, Steam Deck sold and uh, this sold. Okay, I've got one more console here. There it is. So on some of the consoles I've got around here. This one's great too. That's some good stuff. I actually really like the way this one feels in the hand. Anyway, just throwing some stuff on epicpants.com. Head over there and I'll see you in the comments.